Good evening, good evening. Welcome to the New Hope Well Wednesday night Bible class, Bible study. We're thankful and grateful to be here tonight that we might go to the Lord's Word. New Hope Well Baptist Church is located 11479 Dogwood Flat Road, Tanner, Alabama. You're always welcome when we are having service. We'd love to hear from you. At this time, my brothers and sisters, as we make ready to go into our study tonight, <clears throat> we want to go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Father, again, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for watching over us and taking care of us throughout this day and bringing us, dear Lord, safely thus far. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the blessing that you have bestowed upon us this day. For we know, Father, that you are good and your mercy is everlasting and your truth endures to all generation. So we come now, Lord, to bless your name. Father, we pray for strength. We pray for courage. We pray for direction. We pray for understanding. And Lord, we thank you for everything that you've done for us, for you continue to keep us in your protective care. And we come to say thank you for that. And, Lord, we praise you because we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We praise you, Lord, for our salvation and eternal life. And, Heavenly Father, of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus, and his finished work on the cross. And now, Lord, we come praying for our sick to be healed, pray for the lost to be saved. We pray for the bereaved to be comforted and consoled. Pray for this war-torn, sin-sick society. Pray that hearts, minds, and lives will be unshackled. Father, we come praying for our children, our teens, our young adults. Lord, watch over them and take care of them and protect them. Heavenly Father, be with them during this <clears throat> pandemic that you will keep them in your care. Keep them, Lord, from the evil one and just remind them, Heavenly Father, that Satan is not their friend for he come to steal, to kill, and destroy. But you have come that we might have life and that we may have it more abundantly. We pray for our elderly, Lord, that seem to be more at risk. We pray, Lord, that you'll keep them in your protective care. And Father, we pray for those that have contracted the uh, virus. We pray that for their healing. Those of us that have not, we ask for your protection. Heavenly Father, that you will keep us in your protective care. And now, Lord, as we go into this Bible study tonight, we ask you to reveal yourself to us. Lord, open up your, our understanding that we might understand your word and that we might be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving ourselves. And Father, we pray now that you'll teach us how to trust you, honor you, and obey you. And Lord, deliver us from the spirit of complaining. Deliver us, Lord, from the spirit of fear. Heavenly Father, deliver us, Heavenly Father, from evil and the evil way. And, Father, may we love you, honor you, and obey you. May we, as believers, let our light shine before men that they may see our good work and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Lord, increase our faith, help our unbelief. And, Lord, let us be strong witnesses for you during this time, having a Father of trial and testing. And, Father, may we be strong, steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that our labor for you shall never be in vain. We pray for your blood-bought saints everywhere, Lord, that we be the servants that you've called us to be in these last and evil days. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, my brothers and sisters, we've been studying from the book of Exodus, uh, chapter 14, and then we move from chapter 14 to chapter 15. And chap Exodus chapter 14 we, verses uh, 1 through 12, we talked about Israel crying in fear. In chap Exodus chapter 14, verses 13 thir through 31, we talked about Israel walking in faith. All right? And then last week, we moved to Exodus chapter 15, verses 1 through 21, and we talked about Israel praising in triumph. Israel praising in triumph because as they first cried out in fear because of Pharaoh's army that was gaining on them and seemed as though all hope was lost. 
But my brothers and sisters, when the Lord dried up the Red Sea and enabled them to walk across on dry land, then we see Israel walking in faith. And this is where God always want his people to be, is walking in faith. And then last week in Exodus 15, 1 through 21, we saw Israel praising in triumph and Moses, their leader, leading them in a song of praise. What a blessed song. And tonight, we want to talk about Israel complaining in unbelief. Israel complaining in unbelief. Well, if you can believe it, doesn't that sound like the church? Uh, we are crowd in fear. We'll walk in faith for a while when God show us what he can do. And then we can praise him and honor him. We can shout and all of these good things. And then just as soon as something else don't go our way, we find ourselves complaining in unbelief, just like the Israelites. <clears throat> Tonight, we want to look at Exodus chapter 15, verses 22 through 27, as we talk about Israel complaining in unbelief, complaining about bitter water. Are, are y'all with me tonight? So my brothers and sisters, as we look at these verses tonight, I want you not only think about the Israelites, but think about the church today. Think about your situation today. Think about the last time that you cried out to God in fear. Think about the last time that you actually walked in faith. Come on, somebody. Then think about the last time you was able to praise God in triumph and in victory. And then in a few days, you found yourself complaining in unbelief. My brothers and sisters, sometimes the life of believers seems like a roller coaster. We are up and we are down. We are up today, we are down tomorrow. Up today, we are down tomorrow. But my brothers and sisters, God want a church that can walk in faith every day. Guess what? Here's what I want you to think about tonight as we go to the Lord in these scriptures. God has never changed. God will not change. Now, our circumstances will change. Are y'all with me? Our situations will change. But just because our situations change, our circumstances change, our health change, come on, our jobs change, come on, life change, it doesn't mean that God has changed. We need to remember that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's an unchanging God. And my brothers and sisters, God want us to live for him in belief every day and not come complaining in unbelief every time life takes a change. And I need to tell you today that life will take a change. Life will change on you. Tests will come. Trials will come. But we need to learn to trust the Lord. As we've talked about Israel crying in fear, Israel walking in faith, Israel praising in triumph, and now we see Israel complaining in unbelief. What a great miracle they have just witnessed as God dried up the Red Sea, made a wall on each side, caused the wind to blow all night long, dried up the sea so they could walk across Come on, like a highway, get to the other side. And when their enemies attempted to come after them, God let the waters loose and drowned Pharaoh and his army, the Egyptians, in the Red Sea. They sang praises in triumph. They sang praises to God. Moses led them in a song about how good God is. But tonight... But brothers and sisters, we find about three days later, how long did it take? It took them about three days of travel. Now they are complaining again. They are crying out in uh, unbelief. My brothers and sisters, what's wrong with God's church? Why are we up and down in our faith and in living for the Lord? 
Well, let's listen. Let's go to the Word of God and see what the Word of God. I'll be reading from the New King James translation of the Bible tonight. Exodus chapter 15, begin with verse 22. Watch this now. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. You can't stay at the Red Sea. You can put your little memorial up if you want to, but you got to move on. You can't stay there. It's just like Peter, James, and John. Every time God bless us somewhere, we want to stay right there. We don't want to go any further. But as God told Peter, James, and John, you can't stay up here. We got to, the work is down in the valley. We got to leave this mountain. They could not stay at the Red Sea. So the Bible says, so Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Watch this now. Then they went out into the wilderness of Shur. My brothers and sisters, each of us going to have our wilderness experiences. And they went, watch this, three days in the wilderness and found no water. Three days in the wilderness and found no water. Well, they just left a lot of water, didn't they? <laughs> three days in the wilderness. Well, the Amplified Bible says that was about, they traveled about 33 miles. What they was doing and realize now that Moses is leading about two million people, according to most scholars, especially the New Living Translation commentary, believe that there was at least 2,000 people, two million, excuse me, two million people that Moses was leading. That's a lot of folk to lead out in the wilderness. That's a lot of folk to lead anywhere. See, my brothers and sisters, here's what I want you to understand. The, the mission that God gave Moses was impossible without God. Because he sent Aaron to help him didn't mean that it was going to get any easier. What I'm trying to tell you, when God gives us missions so many times, God already know without him they're impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Can we remember that tonight? So they'll travel about three days in the wilderness, about 33 miles. Now, when they came tomorrow, remember, they found no water. In three days, they had found no water. And so now they are thirsty. They are looking for water everywhere they stop. Now, when they come to Mara. The word Mara simply means bitter because watch this, they could not drink the waters of Mara for they were bitter. It was water there, but it's bitter water. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara. And the people complained, watch it, and no, they didn't. I know they didn't. But the Bible said they did. And the people complained against Moses, saying, what shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord, as usual, this is what Moses always do. And the Lord showed him a tree. And when he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. Bitter water becomes sweet water. There he made a statue and an audience for them, and there he tested them. Did you get that? God tested them there at Mara, there where the water was bitter. Church, you need to realize that you're either going through a test or you're headed towards one. <laughs> That's the, we just well understand that. You're either going out and you're leaving one, just getting through one, or you're about to go into another one. And he's tested them and said they just come through the Red Sea, right? They just crossed the Red Sea. But now it says God tested them at Marah where the water is bitter. Look at verse 26. Listen what God tells us. And he tells us the same thing today, church. We need not think that God has changed and said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, Give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of the diseases on you which I have, whoa, 
which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Who heals us? The Lord heals us. Then they came to Elam, watch it, where there were 12 wells of water and 70 palm trees, so they camped there by the water. My brothers and sisters, Israel complaining in unbelief. Think about that now. It would be wonderful to linger at the seaside of the Red Sea and praise the Lord. Just keep on praising him. Get up the next day, praise him again. We're still around the Red Sea. But life doesn't work that way. My brothers and sisters, you can't stay around the seaside. You can't stay on the beach forever. So, my brothers and sisters, the Lord, they, they was praising the Lord, but the believer, we got to realize we can't stay at one place because believers are pilgrims. We are pilgrim travelers. That means this world is not our home. We're just passing through. We really don't have a home here. And he or she must follow God's leading. That's what you and I must do is follow the leading of God. And this is what God wanted Israel to know, that this wilderness is not your home. The Red Sea is not your home. You are not home yet. You want everything to be just like you want it, but you're not home yet. Watch this, church. Do you not know if you are part of the church, you're not home yet? We want everything to be just right, but we're not home yet. <laughs> so, how strange that God, watch this, what a strange thing, that God would lead the children of Israel, to a place without water, without drinking water. What a strange thing for God to lead his people to a place that had nothing but bitter water. Now, remember, God led him to the Red Sea. And so he led him to the Red Sea but he also made a way for them to cross the Red Sea. You need to remember that it's God that has led them to Mara, to the place where the water is bitter. Now, do you think that God didn't know that they were thirsty? Do you think that God didn't know that they'd been traveling for three days, about 33 miles, and hadn't had any water? But yet, God doesn't lead them to good drinking water. He leads them to Mara. He leads them to a place of bitter water. It's a test, my friend, and God will lead us into test. If you know anything about the life of Jesus, you will remember that after his baptism, soon after his water baptism, he was led by the Holy Spirit out into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. And while he was out there for 40 days and 40 nights, come on, my brothers and sisters, he had nothing to eat. God leads us into test. Because God wants strong, robust Christians that can pass the test and be the people that he's called us to be. Why did Jesus say, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work and glorify the Father which is in heaven? The Lord wants us to shine. He wants us to be strong and steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that our labor for him shall never be in vain. But in order for that to happen, we're going to have to go through some tests. And this next test, come on, my brothers and sisters, is at a place called Mara. They named it bitter because the water is bitter. They can't drink the water. And most of y'all probably listening to this won't know anything about suffer water. But I know something about suffer water. Suffer water to me is awful. 
It's water, but it's awful. You can't drink it without putting it through purifiers. And I hate it. It even has a bad smell. So I can imagine about this bitter water. Could have been suffer water, but they could not drink the water the way it was. But listen what happened. They began to complain against Moses. And listen, when they complained against Moses, they was also complaining against God because God was only following, Moses was only following God. Are you got it? So when they complained against Moses, they was actually complaining against God because Moses was following God. He was under orders. God led them there. Remember, God was leading them. A pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. God was leading them. Moses, the Bible teaches us in the book of Exodus, when the cloud stopped, they stopped. When it moved, they moved. So Moses was following God. So now, think about it. Here's two million, let's call them Christians for y'all benefit. Here's two million Christians out there, leading, Moses leading them through the wilderness. God has just performed miracle after miracle to get them out of Egypt. Now he's performed a miracle, get them across the Red Sea. And now, because they've gone three days, remember now, it's just three days. It's not a month, it's not a year, it's not even a week. And they're already complaining. Their great miracle is only three days old. And now they're complaining again. Sound like us, right? <laughs> we don't know how we're going to make it now. Where you go, we're going to make it the same way we made it yesterday. <laughs> I'm going to make it the same way my mom and dad made it. Come on, somebody. David said, I've been young, but now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor the seed begging bread. Come on, somebody. My brothers and sisters, God led them to a place without drinking water. The water was bitter, yet God must discipline his children so that they may discover their own hearts. Many times, God will discipline us and test us. And through these tests, God discipline us, not for him, but so we can get to know our own hearts. Because most of us think we are more than what we are. We think we're stronger Christians than we really are. We think we can go through stuff that we without cracking up. And God is saying, without me, you can't. You're not as strong as you think you are. Oh, yes, the Lord said that was a good testimony. I appreciate it. But now you're going to have to go through a test and see how you make it. So God disciplined his children so that we may discover our own hearts. We need to know who we are. Listen, God already know who we are. Do you remember the story of Job? God already knew who Job was. When Satan came checking on God and the sons of God, when God saw him, he asked him, where have you been, Satan? Satan said, I've been up and down in the earth, walking up and down in the earth, seeking whom I may devour. I want to take some of your folk out. And the Lord said, have you considered my servant Job? For he is a perfect and an upright man. He's a man that shuns evil. He avoids evil. And he's a man of integrity. Come on, somebody. God knew who Job was, but Job really didn't know who Job was. Come on, somebody. Oh, yeah, I don't mean you don't know your name, but do you know what your faith is? Do you know how strong your faith is? Do you know that you can be knocked down and get back up again? Do you know that as long as you keep getting up, you are not a failure? Just because you failed at this doesn't make you a failure. You got to get up and try it again. Because God said, Lord, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. 
my brothers and sisters, with God, we can do things we never dreamed we would be able to do. And not only that, we'll do things we never dreamed we would do. Oh, what a God we serve. But God will put us through a test so you can learn your own heart. God led them to Mara. He led them to a place where the water was bitter. But listen, if God leads you to it, God can see you through it. Somebody ought to say amen tonight. Certainly, certainly, there is no water in the world that could ever satisfy the saint. We need to realize that right now. That's the, one of the lessons God wants us to know. There is no water in the world that's going to satisfy the saint. Quit going back into the world looking for satisfaction. Ah, I come from that era. When that song first come out, I can't get no satisfaction. Yeah, it's a worldly song. I tried and I tried. He said, but I can't get no. It's true. I can't get no satisfaction. Now, I could tell that dude, whoever wrote that song, I don't even remember now, but I remember the song. I could tell him, without God, you won't get any satisfaction. But Paul said, I've learned to be content with whatever state I'm in. I've learned to be content with my Lord. I can find satisfaction in him. So quit looking in the world to find satisfaction. Quit drinking water out of the well of the world and drink out of the well that'll never run dry. Drink out of that well that that Samaritan woman said, I want to drink. And she knew there was a well sitting on a well. It was Jesus Christ. And he said, if you get a drink of this water, you won't come here anymore. You won't thirst anymore. He's talking about living water. He's talking about eternal life. He's talking about filling a need that can't nobody else feel but Jesus. My brothers and sisters, I'm told, I don't know about you, but when I'm thirsty for water, nothing else do, does it. And nothing else will purify your body like natural water. It's a natural purifier. Amen. My little doctor tell me every time I go, are you drinking plenty of water? <laughs> I say, yes, sir, I love water. Had another checkup the other day, different doctor. He want to know, what about your water intake? I said, I love water. Thank God I love water. Have no problem with water. He said, that's the secret. Keep drinking that water. Oh, my brothers and sisters, why don't we keep feeding on Jesus Christ? Keep drinking that water of life who is Jesus Christ. Now, the water was bitter. <laughs> the water was bitter. And God led them to a place of bitter water. He said, man, why, why, why? Then when the Jews finally went three days without water, and when they finally saw the water, they discovered that it was bitter. And immediately... They complained to Moses and to God. Now, logic would say that they was not fretting. They was not fearful. Because they had just witnessed God taking care of them three days ago. Looked like they ought to have a little faith left. This is why I tell you, every day you're going to have to get up and work on your faith. I wish you could do it, but we can't save faith over for the next day. Every day you got to get up and renew that faith. You see, my brothers and sisters, too many of us get up happy-go-lucky because everything is going pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good, and we forget about the Lord. We forget to ask the Lord and invite him to come and be with me this day, Lord. I don't know what I'm going to encounter this day. But, Lord, if you come and be with me, I believe I'll make another day. Can I get a witness here today? My brothers and sisters, here they are complaining. Three days later, after the great miracle of crossing the Red Sea, they are complaining again. How many 
of us. God has brought us across some red seas, and now because the water is bitter, we're complaining again. <laughs> Let me tell you, if you live for the Lord, your water will get bitter sometime because the world is not your friend and Satan is not your friend. And if you are living for God, Satan want to take you out. And not only that, but God will lead us to places of bitter water to discipline us and to make us and mold us into what he would have us to be. Are y'all with me? Why? Because he's got another mountain for you to cross. Amen. Now, here's what we need to see here. How wicked the human heart is. Three days in the wilderness. <laughs> now, most of us Christians can't stand many days in the wilderness. We can't go without water. Oh, Moses, you low down rascal. I know you know where some water is out here. I know you do. You came back this way up there when you came to get us. I bound you, you know you just don't want us to have any water. Now, why wouldn't he want them to have water? But they're complaining against him. Well, Larry, why did you say how wicked the human heart is? Well, we praise God one day for his glorious salvation and then complain to him when we find bitter waters. <laughs> we want everything to go right every day, don't we? Job had this problem with his people. His wife, <laughs> poor Job, bless his heart. But his wife, was, she was suffering too. Sister Job was suffering too. She had lost seven children too, just like Job. And, and if that wasn't enough to lose seven children and have seven funerals at the same time, here comes Job getting sick on me. My husband getting sick on me. I ain't got nobody to take care of me. And now we've lost everything, including our children. And now this joker gets sick on me. I ain't got nobody to take care of me. Why don't you just curse God and die? If you can't do nothing for me, go on. How weak it, y'all excuse me, how weak it the human heart is. Praise God one day for his glorious salvation. Then we'll complain to him when we find bitter water. Brother, if you stay with the Lord, he'll lead you to some bitter water sometime. But Job said, shouldn't we take the bitter with the sweet? Oh, yes, Job, we're going to have to take the bitter with the sweet. We're going to have to learn to take the bitter with the sweet. This experience of the Israelites, this experience brought, taught Israel some valuable lessons. And the experiences that God allowed us to go through, don't fool yourself, it will teach us some valuable lessons. When I'm going through my trials, my tests, I ask God, don't allow me to miss my lesson here. <laughs> have you ever gone to school and didn't have your lesson? <laughs> That's a bad day. Isn't it? That's a tough day. You don't even want to go because you know you don't have your lesson. You know, really, school's not bad if you got your lesson. If you know where you're going, know what you're doing. You can hold her hand, hey, 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 hey. And, you know, the days when I really had my stuff together, the teacher want to look on me. The days when I'm trying to hide behind folk, Larry, won't that happen? So, my brothers and sisters, could it be this way with God? He want us to always get the lesson. God is teaching Israel a valuable lesson. And God, when he allowed the bitter water to come into our lives, he's teaching us valuable lessons. God is in the teaching business. That's why he told parents, what is it? train up a child in the way that they should go. When they're old, they will not depart from it. What is God doing with us? He's training us up. Hopefully, we won't go astray. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, we're going to look at these lessons. There are about three lessons that God teaches them here. Number one, he teaches them lessons about life. This is what we need to know today as a church. 
We need to have lessons about life. Today, right today, during this time, God is giving us lessons on life. Life is a combination of the bitter and the sweet. Can I get a witness here? Triumphs and trials. Oh, if I had a congregation, I preached tonight. If we are following God, however, we never need to fear what comes our way. We don't have to fear. And I say it again. The Apostle Paul told Timothy when Timothy was afraid of the congregation. And a lot of times we, even as pastors, can't do what we know God wants us to do because we're afraid of our congregation like Timothy was. And Paul said, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Come on, somebody. Concerned, yes. Fearful, no. God didn't give the fear to us. So when we have this fear, it didn't come by God. We are allowing somebody else to control us. I refuse to be controlled by other folk, anybody except the Lord. And after each trial, my brothers and sisters, we need to realize after each trial, there is always a spiritual Elam. Look in verse 27. God, now, just before I read that, when at Mara, when they were complaining to Moses, the water is bitter. Somebody ran down there and just dropped down and started drinking it. Whoa, it's bitter. We can't drink it. God tells Moses, hey, isn't it good? Go cut this certain tree down and throw it in the water. I showed them rascals. And I know they was talking to that. Look at him, look at him. It's already bitter. Now he's throwing a tree in there. We ought to just get him right now. Who want to leave? Everybody says, I don't want to leave. There ain't no water here. I ain't going. Is that a good time for me to take over? If you know anything about leadership, don't nobody want to take over when things down. They want to take over when it's up. Moses put the tree in the water, and the water becomes sweet. Everybody can get a drink. Come on, somebody. Isn't God good? All the time. And God leads them. They got him a good drink, and God, see, here's the, here's the problem. They were on their way to Elam in the first place. <laughs> Somebody ought to shout right now. God had them en route to Elam when they were complaining. All you had to do is wait up on the Lord. Isaiah said, they that wait up on the Lord shall renew thy strength. You shall man up with wings as eagles, run and not be weary, walk and not faint. All you got to do is wait, I tell you. God is coming. And I tell you, if you're in trouble, don't fool yourself. He's coming. When them boys was out down the, down the river in that storm, Jesus came walking on water to see about him. God will move heaven and earth to come see about his children. Oh, yes. Because after every trial, <laughs> y'all to be shouting now. After every trial, there is always a spiritual Elam. Look at verse 27. Verse 27. Then they came to Elam, where there were 12 whales. Ain't nobody do it like God. Twelve wells of water. <laughs> they just left bitter water. Moses had to cut a tree down and let it fall in the water to make the water sweet. But they were on their way to Elam. Come on. I might have my trial. I may have my tribulation, my sickness, my ups and my downs. But I'm on my way. <laughs> Come on, somebody. To a land of happiness and joy and peace. I'm on my way to a place where there's 12 gates to the city. 12. They back there complaining when God was trying to get them to Elam. Somebody's complaining in the church today. 
and God's trying to get you to Elam. That's where you're headed. Yeah, you had to go through the wilderness. You had to go a few days without water, but you shouldn't have been complaining because God is leading you. And when you trusted Jesus as your Savior, you agreed to let him be Lord. <laughs> Did you know that? You agreed to let him be Lord of your life. Come on, somebody. Then they came to Elam where there were 12 wells of water. Watch this. And 70 palm trees. So they camped there by the waters. Oh, they're ready to hang out again, aren't they? Huh? Look what God can do if we'll just trust him. Do you not believe that when they was complaining three days in the wilderness without any water, do you not believe that God was on his way with them, leading them to what? Elam? My brothers and sisters, when we're having our trials and our tribulations, our setbacks, our sicknesses, and our fears that we go through, you know, don't you know you're on the way to the kingdom land? What a week it will cease from troubling and the weary can be at rest where there is no more sickness, no more dying, no more weeping, I tell you. There'll be no more crying. God will wipe every tear from your eyes. Come on, somebody. Somebody ought to say amen. Well, my brothers and sisters, where God, there, there at Elam is where God refreshes us. God refreshes us at Elam. We must accept the bitter water with the sweet, knowing that God know what is best for us. Oh, if we would just, if we could just get that, that God knows what's best for us. Second, the second lesson, second lesson that God taught Israel. He taught them about themselves. Number one, he taught them about life. Secondly, he taught them about themselves. God not only want to teach us about life, Christian, God want to teach us about ourselves. We need to get to know ourselves. A lot of us don't know ourselves. We don't know who we are. Sometimes your wife can tell you more about you, husband, than you know about yourself. <laughs> I used to love them at game show of the newlyweds. See how much one knew about the other? How much do you know about yourself? What if we was to have one of them shows with God and God would raise up the, the sign when they asked us a question and we'd be wrong so many times, Bob. <laughs> Life is a great laboratory, someone has said. And each experience x-rays our hearts and reveals what we really are. Isn't that something? The waters of Mara revealed that the Jews were whirly. They were whirly. They were whirly. They was a people of whirly thinking. Only of, they was thinking only of bodily satisfaction. And that's probably why the church is really today, spiritually. We are hung up on bodily satisfaction. As long as we can feel good, honey, we know it's all right. But let me start feeling bad. Let these things start happening. I can't feel good. I can't do this or that. Oh, I'm feeling, uh, hey, hey, I wonder where God, where is God? Where is he? They tell me one of the great things that's plaguing folk now is loneliness. Loneliness. But then some Christian come up with a study and say, hey, they ain't just got lonely. These folk been long. <laughs> Coronavirus, they get these long. These folk been lonely. We've been interviewing them for a long time. They've been lonely. So there are so many things we allow to get us down. They were walking. Here's what was happening. They were walking by sight rather than faith. They was expecting to be satisfied by the world. My brothers and sisters, listen, listen, church folk. You, we, we spend most of our time trying to be satisfied by the world and worldly things. We know more about what the world say than the Lord says. We can tell you what the CDC say. We can tell you what 
the WHO say, but we can't tell you what Genesis 1 says. One and one. Come on, somebody. <laughs> we need to know what the Lord says about all of this. It's in there. They were trying to be satisfied by the world. They were ungrateful. They were complaining to God when trials came their way. Listen, let me tell you something. This is what Jesus said. Jesus said, if everybody in the world loves you, something's wrong. Many times, what I used to tell, teach our boys, hey, you don't really need a big crowd of folk. Now, thank God my oldest brother taught me this. You don't need a carload of other boys in the car with you. Because you're going, I said, why is that, man? Hey, they my friend. Yeah, and you're going to get in trouble. <laughs> you don't need a carload of folk. Young people, you do not need a carload of folk. If you got one friend, fine. But I tell you, you don't have 12 friends. <laughs> you may have 12 acquaintances, <laughs> but not 12 friends. If you can find one friend that'll be with you to the end, you're doing well. So don't try to make everybody love you. Learn to be a leader and not a follower. Oh, I, somebody hear me out there. Learn to be a leader and not a follower. Learn to be the head and not the tail. Y'all know that, right? That's what he's telling us. We are not to be the tail. We are to be leaders. God is raising up leaders. And here is, so my brothers and sisters, they were ungrateful. They were complaining to God when trials came their way. Now, Here's the third lesson, and I'll let you go. Here's the third lesson. God taught them a lesson about the Lord. He taught them a lesson about life. He taught them a lesson about themselves. And then he taught them a lesson about God, about the Lord. And this is the most important lesson that we will learn, is the lesson about God. We need to go to the school of theology. We need to learn about God. We need to not only learn about God, but know God. Get to know God. And if you're going to get to know God any better, it's going to have to be through the word of God. Jesus said, Lo, I come in the volume of this book to do thy will, O God. Open the book. We won't be so confused about what's going on if we open the book. Everything you need to know is in here. He, God, knows the need of every one of us because he planned the way. Do you not know God planned the way for Israel from Egypt to Cana? He had the way already planned. All they had to do is follow God's direction. God has the way planned for every believer from earth to glory. All we got to do is follow his plan. God is able to use the tree. Come on, somebody. Remember the tree? The water was bitter, but Moses, God instructed him to cut the tree to fall in the water. The bitter water became sweet water. That's what happened when Jesus died on a tree. We call it a cross, but it was a tree. Out of that bitterness that Christ went through, it come become sweet for us because we receive salvation because he died on a tree. God is able to use the tree and Peter talks about it in 1 Peter 2, 24. And I'll read it to you in a, in a moment. But God used the tree to make the bitter water sweet. He is Jehovah Raphia, the Lord who heals. We can trust him with every difficult situation of life. 1 Peter 2, 24. Peter said it this way. And Peter knew something about Jesus. He was able to walk with him. Peter was in the inner circle. And God allowed Peter to write two books. Y'all calling me. <laughs> Y'all calling said he denied him. But Peter was willing to confess and repent. 
1 Peter 2, 24 and 25, Peter said, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree. That's what Jesus did for us, that we having died to sin might live for righteousness by whose stripes, that means by whose wounds, you were healed. My brothers and sisters, our healing has already been paid for. It's already on the book. 1 Peter 2, 25 for you were like sheep gone astray. When did Jesus die on the cross for us? When we were like sheep gone astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and the overseer of your soul. My brothers and sisters, one commentator said the tree was synonym for the cross among first century Jews. You find it in Deuteronomy 21 and 22 and 23. Galatians in the New Testament, Galatians 3.13 Thanks to Christ's submission and sacrifice, believers are redeemed, released from sin, restored to spiritual health, and returned to safety through the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that died on the cross. Isaiah looked way down through time. Some scholars say at least 800 years through the telescope of time. And Isaiah saw a suffering Savior. And Isaiah said, surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrow. Yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. Just time and our peace was upon him, and by his stripes, we were healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. My brothers and sisters, why? Why would we complain? Why would we complain just because the water is bitter? Somebody's had a taste of bitter water today. But I want to tell you, God is taking you somewhere. He's on his way to Elam, a place of refreshing. When they got to Elam, they had 12 wells of water. Everybody had plenty of water. Yeah, there's 2 million people. They needed 12 wells. They needed all of those palm trees, 70 palm trees. God let them hang out for a while. My brothers and sisters, if you stay with God, it's going to get sweet after a while. Why don't you stay with him? It'll get sweet after a while. I know folk are going through some things now, but hold on. Hold out. Stay with God. It'll get sweet after a while. It'll be ref you'll be refreshed if you stay with him. May God bless you. May the Lord forever keep you as our prayer.